Well, hello, Wilfred, and, and happy holidays to everybody, Leslie and everybody in the team. To me, when they come around and they finally hit the, the mega cap tech stocks that were considered defensive throughout this whole period, when they finally come around and start punching at those, those are really the only last bastions that have held everything up. It's probably closer to the end of a correction than the beginning. Maybe for the indices, it'll be a little bit choppy, but you saw the oversold bounce by the way that the Russell acted today and outperformed, just like it's been underperforming. So when I go back, Wilford, and I look at, when you look at the NASDAQ advanced decline line, so the internals of the market for the people that aren't familiar with that they're back to where they were last October so you've given back all the gains in the Nasdaq advanced decline line going all the way back to last October and the Russell 2000 is as oversold as you get on, a, on the weekly stochastic that we follow so this is all real tactical stuff even though we're mostly fundamental you've seen the kind of crunching underneath the surface that would indicate a correction is due for a bounce I get, I get that argument, and I know the last couple of times you've been on, Tony, you've made the case for, for why we could get a bit of a bounce. That said, next year, do you think we're going to get resoundingly strong gains? And, and if not, as we get into the new year, is it possible that investors really kind of just change their sentiment and decide, well, it's probably more sensible to sit on the sidelines rather than take big, big long positions? Well, Wilfred, as you know, our view is that each, each recession you've gone into in the last four comes from a unique reason, but the solution is always the same. Throw as much money at it as you can. That means the market response is typically going to be the same. You get this massive move off the recession-based low that's fueled by you know excess, excess liquidity, and then you start to get economic growth and wonder what's going to happen with the Fed. That's what marked 2005, which was an up 3% year, and even 2011, which was, you know, of course, a European debt crisis uh, year but it also was a flat year. So I think we're going to be similar to that, where we have monetary uncertainty, we have fiscal policy uncertainty, we have inflation uncertainty, we have the midterm elections and a lot of geopolitical issues. And I think all of those, you're going to get these oversold bounces. So our game plan into next year is going to be a little bit different. Um, it's going to be kind of what it was this year. Our game plan into, into next year is rather than try to predict the next big move, I think we want to be in a position to react to the next big move. When you look at how the markets acted week to week or even day to day, it's opposite day. You know, like last week you had a really strong week and now you've had a really weak. It's just it's too hard with this monetary uncertainty to predict the next big move. So I'd rather be in a position to react to it. What does that mean, Tony, to react to it? Is it possible to still make money if you're following kind of the trends that are taking place in the market? Well, remember, <laughs> consensus is usually right, except for that one-tenth of a percent time. So what you do is you wait for times like this, for example, in the Russell 2000 or even in the NASDAQ. As you guys know, I have not been a big fan of the high-growth, high-momentum names the entire year. Um, but now they're getting to a level of oversold that make them a little bit more interesting, as Stephanie was talking to before. Um, again, that's where you want to be able to take advantage of market weakness with a good fundamental backdrop. Remember, you know, for, to see a significant and sustainable drop in equities, I mean, significant and sustainable, you need to have a negative earnings out. 